The American soldier today, more than ever, is made aware that physical fitness activities are a regular and necessary part of our military training program. The United States Army, proud of its continuing contribution to organized athletics and international sports events, assures its uniformed men and women the fullest opportunity of participating in competitive athletics which emphasize physical fitness, military training, and combat readiness. This big picture is a profile of today's Army sports program from the expanded intramural level at installations and divisions in inter service sports competition to the excitement of international sports events such as the Olympic Games. And the annual worldwide sports event scheduled under the auspices of CISM, the International Military Sports Council. We'll be meeting and watching athletes who, through their achievement in the world of sports, have proved themselves to be ambassadors of goodwill for our country. everybody and welcome to Shea Stadium in Flushing, New York, the home of the New York Mets Baseball Club. I'm Lindsay Nelson and with me are athletes whose names and achievements are well known to sports enthusiasts from coast to coast. It'll be our pleasure during this half hour to talk about and show you just what the Army sports program is and how it benefits the participants, the Army, and our national commitment in international sports events. Our first sports personality is a young man who wore an Army uniform from 1959 to 1962. And since those days, he has played a major role in professional football. His five seasons in the American Football League have brought him to the pinnacle of athletic success. On December 26, 1964, he quarterbacked the Buffalo Bills to the AFL Championship in an exciting 20-7 victory over his former San Diego Charger teammates. Star quarterback, all-league pro quarterback in 1960, and a young man who can really move a football team, meet Jack Kemp of the AFL champion Buffalo Bills. Thank you, Lindsay. You know, the rosters of the major league football teams include many players with Army service backgrounds. The real emphasis on football as an Army sport, however, is found at the intramural level. Physical fitness, morale, and teamwork are keystones of the Army sports program. Soldiers with the desire to play football are given every opportunity. Within the division and installation, an intramural football program assures greater participation and is directly related to the goals stressed by the Army. In this game between Fort Eustis and a Marine team from Camp Lejeune, regional competition becomes an extension of intramural emphasis.
The importance of participating and competing does not rest with the final score alone, but rather in the way it helps the soldier maintain physical proficiency and combat readiness. At many places where the American soldier is stationed, he has the assurance that football is within his grasp. From football and Jackie Kemp, let's meet our second athlete whose Army service spanned the years from 1942 to 1946. He is the greatest left-hand pitcher in the history of the major leagues, having won more games than any other left-hander who ever lived. Among his many major league achievements are World Series victories and two no-hit games, a great credit to his professional sport, Mr. Baseball, Warren Spahn. Thanks, Lindsay. Just as with pro football, Major League Baseball rosters include many names of athletes who at some time have worn an Army uniform. Baseball and softball have always been important to the Army sports scene. Overseas and here at home, our servicemen can participate in a well-organized and supervised intramural program. At Army installations throughout the world, the call of play ball is a familiar one. In his off-duty time, the soldier athlete is given every encouragement to pick up a glove and join his fellow soldiers in organized team competition. Teamwork and team spirit are morale builders. The Army, aware of this, feels that intramural competition affords the soldier the greatest chance of actually participating and realizing the benefits of a good sports program. Striking out a batter. Going two for three. Or winning a close game is just as satisfying to the players involved in intramural play as it is to those who pursue the sport where greater reward or fame may be at stake. We've mentioned football and baseball as Army sports. Now let's bring in our third guest athlete, whose talents on a basketball court are well known to fans and his teammates of the Cincinnati Royals of the National Basketball Association. This Army photograph, taken during his basic training in 1961, is evidence that his aiming technique has always been mighty accurate. During his five seasons in the NBA, this gifted young athlete has blazed an impressive trail in professional basketball. A unanimous choice for the 1965 NBA All-Star squad, he has been selected for every All-Star team since playing NBA ball and was the most valuable player of the 1961 and 1964 games. He presently holds pro records for most points in a season, most rebounds in a game, and most assists in a game for a guard. In the 1960 Olympic Games, he was a member of the U.S. basketball team, which won the coveted gold medal and which remained undefeated in Olympic Games competition. I'm referring to the big O, Oscar Robertson, the young athlete who can talk about basketball with authority. Thank you, Lindsay. In the Army, basketball at the intramural level is a great attraction to our soldiers. And the satisfaction they get from playing it reflects those goals already mentioned by Jackie and Warren. Physical fitness, morale, and teamwork. However, Army sports competition is not only intramural. Inter-service tournament play is just as important whenever it contributes to the welfare and morale of participating units. At this year's inter-service basketball tournament held in Fort Lewis, Washington, teams representing the Army, Marines, Navy, and the Air Force met to determine the inter-service championship. Army's team, composed of outstanding soldier athletes, had shown great skill in defeating the Air Force squad 103 to 75 in quarterfinal play. In the semifinals, Army, wearing white, played Navy. In the first half, 
The score was tied four times before Army's quintet spurted to a 39 to 23 halftime lead. The second half was more of the same as 11 Army players scored 74 points to the Navy's 58. In the final game, Army met the Marines. But this time, Army had the situation well in hand. Army guard Vern Benson from Fort Ord led his team by scoring 30 points as Army triumphed 83 to 78 to regain the inter-service basketball crown. Again, guard Vern Benson, a high school teammate of mine, was the tournament's leading scorer with 62 points. He and three other Army players were named to the 12-man Armed Forces team, which went on to win a international AAU championship tournament in Denver. Vern was selected the most valuable player in this tournament. This type of tournament involving inter-service play is another dimension of Army's diversified sports program. Thank you, Oscar. Jackie Kemp, Warren Spawn, and Oscar Robinson have given you an insight as to how football, baseball, and basketball fit into the panorama of Army sports. But these are only a few of the sports in which the Army encourages participation and competition. There are more, swimming, Volleyball, golf, and tennis receive proper recognition, and individual participation is encouraged during off-duty hours under the supervision of experienced Army Special Services representatives. Another sport which receives prominence in the Army sports program is boxing. Conducted under strict adherence to amateur boxing regulations and safety precautions, this is a sport which really stresses physical conditioning. This year's Army boxing trials, held at Fort Campbell, Kentucky, 61 Army boxers competed in 10 weight classes to determine Army representatives who would go on to the inter-service boxing tournament at Hamilton Air Force Base, California. A number of Army boxers were selected to represent the Army in the 1965 Inter-Service Championship. At Hamilton Air Force Base, California, these 10 boxing finalists represented the Army team to determine the Inter-Service winners. as an Army sport again emphasizes the individual's physical and mental dexterity. This 
this year, 13 Army wrestlers qualified to represent the Army in the 1965 Inter-Service Wrestling Championships at Mare Island, California. The United States Army fully supports certain international sports events which are authorized by appropriate law and which have Department of Defense and Department of State approval. SISM, the International Military Sports Council, involves the armed forces from 35 countries with headquarters in Brussels, Belgium. Events such as this SISM cross-country race in Tunisia involve 72 runners from 12 nations competing against the clock over a five-mile course. The International Military Sports Council promotes increased physical fitness, research in sports medicine, and coaching techniques, and conducts frequent international clinics on physical training and athletics. In Belgium, this SISM military pentathlon obstacle race is a test to try any athlete's physical endurance and concentration. After negotiating this obstacle course against time, the athlete must complete a grenade throwing test, first for distance, and then at a circled ground target. To cap this intriguing athletic challenge, there is a utility swimming event in which the athlete must overcome waterborne obstacles and the timer's clock. At Fort Sam Houston, Texas, another international sports event. The 1964 SISM Modern Pentathlon Championship was hosted by the 4th United States Army. Competition among participating SISM nations included equestrian events with first place honors going to West Germany. Mexico second, and the United States third. Pistol shooting, the United States place one, two, three for a clean sweep. In the 4,000-meter cross-country race, Army Captain Jim Moore won second place for the U.S. team. <laughs> At 
At the completion of the games, the SISM scoreboard showed that our United States military athletes had accumulated the highest point total to finish first, with West Germany second and Brazil third. Even more important was the friendly spirit, the international goodwill, the mutual understanding and respect, and the common purpose that brought these athletes and their respective countries together. It is at the Olympic Games that the zenith of international competition is realized and military sports is part and parcel of our national sport program. Among the 290 U.S. male athletes at the 1964 Olympic Games, 52 were from our military services. They were to win for our country 20 Olympic medals, 8 gold, 5 silver, and 7 bronze. platform diving event, Army PFC Bob Webster, a gold medal winner in the 1960 Games, took first place and received his second gold medal. Another gold medal winner was Army Lieutenant Jerry Anderson, who set a new world record in winning the 300-meter free rifle event. A silver medal was won by Army Captain Jim Moore a member of our modern pentathlon team. PFC Paul Drayton was a member of the U.S. team, which set a new world record in the 400-meter relay. Lieutenant Olin Cassell was a member of the U.S. team, which set a new world record in the 1,600-meter relay. Lieutenant Lonis Wigger, Jr., who set a new world record in the three-position small bore shooting event. And First Lieutenant Tom Amlong, one of the four servicemen comprising our team entry in the eight-oared crew race. As in past Olympic Games, our country can be rightfully proud of the competitive spirit 
and caliber of sportsmanship exhibited by Army athletes and the entire United States Olympic team at Tokyo. As President Johnson said to our Olympic team at a reception in their honor, we are proud of the record that you have made and the way in which you have served as ambassadors of goodwill for our country. To our president's salute can be added that the international language of sport provides one of the best means of promoting understanding and mutual respect among all peoples of the world. The Army sports program is as big as the Army itself. It exists to serve our soldiers around the world with a competitive program which will benefit the participant in both his athletic and military proficiency. And so this profile of the Army sports in action is now complete. Thanks go to Jackie Kemp, Oscar Robinson, and Warren Spahn for giving their time and helping to present the big picture of the Army sports program.